Hi everyone, welcome. I'm down here in my wormery. What you see here is a nice generous feeding I've got set aside for my European night crawlers. So I'm going to go get those boxes out onto the bench and give them the food that I've allocated for them today. And I'm not expecting anything out of the ordinary, so we'll see how that goes. You never know. There's always a twist or a turn or a surprise waiting for you right around the corner when it comes to farming worms. <laughs> All right, let's go get the uh, let's go get the first bin out here and see what what's going on. So the bin that you see here is the uh, younger of the two. This one's been around for 90, no, 87 days. The older of the bins is the 94 day old bin. And with only a week difference in their ages, I decided not too long ago that I would just start um, managing them in a parallel fashion, equal feedings, equal everything, um, equal intervals in between the feedings, so on and so forth. And I, um, I just took into account the fact that maybe there's um, slightly fewer worms in this one. And if that is the case, we start to observe that as um, a fact, then we'll just maybe go a little easier on the portion for this container. Um, but let's see how they did with last week's feeding. I, I did really quickly just buzz through the video from last week's feeding, but just skimming, really just skimming to see if there was anything out of the ordinary that sort of caught my eye to refresh my memory. But as far as I remember, the feeding was pretty routine. I, um, I was just trying to remind myself whether or not we were still adding fresh leaves or not. Because sometimes when bins get close to the age of 100, at least in my wormery, since I usually run bins something in the neighborhood of about 150, 160 days of age, I, um, I usually use 100 days age as sort of the um, indicator to myself whether or not I want to still keep putting in slow composting materials knowing that the harvest of the castings is coming soon or do I want to start using stuff that I think is going to maybe break down a little bit more quickly so it's uh, it's around this time um, that I start to try to adapt to the age of the bin we got ourselves a little worm that's not enjoying the surprise uh, pop-in visit here I gotta keep an eye out sometimes I am so close to the top edge here that I um I could get a escapee slip past me pretty quickly without me noticing it so let's see what we could do about getting these guys fed without too much disturbance it's avocado no mango seed I'm sorry still even seems to have some of the remaining material in it this avocado was never broken open, so I think this also still has a good amount of the material still in it. Oops. i got to be careful. It's very fragile. <laughs> Not that it would matter if I busted it up, but I just try to um, keep it whole so I could see what its progress is on its own without any help. Um, just the worms and everything else breaking it down. So we get, we've been giving lots and lots of bedding. So even though I don't really see any traces of the food they got last time, um, I could feel, you know, moisture on the bedding around where the foods had been previously placed, making me think that what really kind of remains is only sort of the juices of the last feeding, as well as some of these older, slower composting items that we keep bumping into, feeding after feeding, these, um, these whole avocados, or this whole avocado, this part of an avocado, this mango seed. Those are those sort of things that I don't even know if they'll get broken down by the time this bin gets to its finish. But we'll see. It, it's possible. They are all coming along quite nicely, although I might have to help the, the whole avocado. Um, maybe break it apart if I really want to see it get done in the next, you know, 50 or 60 days. So yeah, sometimes, you know, I tell myself um, that there's certain triggers, you know, that are going to tell me that it's time to stop feeding a bin and start, you know, start steering it towards harvest. And in my case, a lot of times the trigger is just sort of reaching a capacity, a point 
where you just feel like you can't do your everyday stuff anymore. You're kind of out of room, you know, and maybe that's the reason enough to start bringing a worm bin to its conclusion. And these bins are maybe, I don't know, seven or eight gallons in capacity, somewhere around there. And they're a good size for sure. But um, once they start filling up, I feel I'm a little cramped, you know, and I usually use that as my indicator that it's time to um, wind things down. So let's, uh, let's get to feeding here. It was kind of fun poking around, checking out little pockets of worms here and there. Let's get their feeding in here. I'm kind of sticking to my theme of being generous with the bedding. So I'm going to throw in some bedding. And like we usually do, we try to help the bedding not become all just a big wad of paper. <laughs> so I try to commingle the, um, the paper strips and the paper shreds that I add with something that might help um, keep the sheets of paper separate from each other. This way we don't just have a whole stack of paper matted up against itself. It's sort of um, already mixed with something that's going to help assure some separation of the material. So that's the way I like to try to add shredded paper. Otherwise you just end up with clumps, you know. And it's not a whole lot, but I, like I said earlier, I feel like I'm approaching capacity in here. So, you know, that might just mean small feedings or less bedding or whatever the case may be. Let's see what this assortment this looks like here. Maybe pick the stuff out individually. There was a big hole on the side of this bag, so I'm trying to be careful not to have stuff slide out the side. So, like, one thing we've got here is a whole mound of, um... Put this down for a second. We've got a whole bunch of... Oops. <laughs> got a whole bunch of... Frozen... Um... Sorry, I'm drawing a blank here. It's melon, right? It's cantaloupe melon uh, rinds that are all chopped up into little tiny pieces, of which I was only able to dislodge a few. <laughs> so I'm wondering if we could just save these few that I could dislodge for the other bins so we can share. We'll throw those back in the assortment. But then we'll see what else is in here. We've got um, a variety of lettuce leaves, pretty fast composting stuff so far, as well as the stem end of the lettuce head. And a couple tomatoes for good measure, but we want to leave some for the other bin. And that's about a, a fair split. Some lettuce in here, some cantaloupe rinds, another um, butt end of another head of lettuce, so it's pretty fair distribution. I've also got the um, coffee that I'm going to drop in. But before we do, let's give these guys a little dose of grit to go with their feeding. Pulverized eggshell in my case, my grit. And then we could get this feeding wrapped up. Okay, very nice. And you know what? We'll add this paper towel as extra bedding type material, a little bit of a carbon supplement to their feeding. And I think by piecing it up into little chunks it might help it break down a little more quickly. So that's a pretty good feeding. We'll just return some of these old items back down to where they were. And maybe maybe next week we'll crack open um, the avocado just to see how things are progressing inside of it. Maybe by breaking it open we'll help it um, pro progress more quickly to the finish line. And here too with this mango seed, just opening the husk up a little bit to make you know other worms feel like they can go in there too, that they're welcome to go check that out as well. So this one little guy in here doesn't hog the whole thing up by himself. <laughs> the final decision I think here is going to be, do we add more leaves or do we stop now? Do we use this amount of leaves that we've already got in here? Some of it fairly fresh still up on the top surface. Do we stop at the last feeding? Or do we use a little bit more, but um, do so knowing that it could be the last? <laughs> I don't know. We'll give ourselves two more minutes to make that decision because I just want to take a quick peek on the outer edges of the bin before we 
call it a day in here. Material's breaking down nicely. It's got nice moisture levels. It's still pretty heavily commingled with a lot of unbroken down fresh bedding, a lot of leafy stuff. Maybe some cardboard and paper mixed in there too. But a whole bunch of bedding in there on the side, still needing to be broken down. It's starting to make me wonder if we want to just maybe leave it at that with this stuff here. Also kind of on the to-do list as far as bedding needing to be broken down. Let's see. Here, very similar. Something sort of giving me the feeling though that there might be more castings mixed in with this bedding material that's not yet broken down. Oops. <laughs> Sorry about that. Moisture level seems pretty good in here too. Maybe a little dry, but I just did mix in some... Um, slightly dry material, but I don't think it's going to jeopardize the moisture level of the bin as a whole. I think that this bin is definitely at the stage where it can kind of hang on to its own moisture with a whole lot of help. And you saw it was covered with just cardboard and paper, so it doesn't need a whole lot of help as far as helping it hang on to its moisture. So, um, uh, this is the younger of the two. So even if I decide to hold off on covering the other one with fresh leaves, this one I probably still could, but it's just the capacity at this point, you know, maybe, our, maybe, maybe we will kind of treat this as the last feeding to include fresh leaves going forward in these two bins and start helping um, drive some of this stuff to getting broken down. We still got a nice, pretty natural looking cover here on top anyway, right? <laughs> Hopefully we didn't forget anything. I feel like I've got all the bases covered here. Got the food, got the grit, got a little bit of fresh bedding. Check the moisture all around, everything seems okay. So, we're good to go for the next bin. Let's get that one out here and feed them too. Alright, so like I said, very similar bins. Both of them... You know, same size container, same types of materials being used to cover up, newspaper and cardboard, same leafy top covering, right down to even feeding zone indicator or a used coffee filter. And we always feed down the middle, so finding the feeding zone shouldn't be too difficult, <laughs> even if it, that coffee filter wasn't there. So now, like I said, very similar both bins, this one being one week older, and like I said earlier, possibly um, populated with a greater number of worms out of these two. I would have to guess that this one probably has more. So as we peel back the fresh leaves, the stuff right below, it really starts to have this really nice kind of broken down look. Worms scattered throughout it. Little chunks of bedding that's not yet broken down, but also lots and lots of castings. Maybe a, a slightly more castings rich um, material than we saw in the other bin, but we'll get a better look once we rummage around the outer edges. Why don't we save that for last and get this bin fed, drop in this remaining food that we bought down here. Um, stuff from the old feeding, right away I could tell that this is an old corn cob bit. And I've decided maybe we'll just help it break down a little bit by piecing it into little chunks. I don't think we'll be able to recognize it as a, a corn cob bit anymore now after breaking it up that way. Nice castings rich feeding area. A little bit of scrap down here, maybe a wad of paper. You know, maybe I didn't um, successfully mix it with other bedding materials to help help it um, not stick to itself and just anywhere you look there's a whole bunch of worms still kind of working down some of the food in here I guess maybe some of the old leftovers from the previous week but these corn cob bits for example would definitely be leftovers that go back many weeks at this point here too this is probably a corn cob bit my guess is that other than the corn cob bits, if we see any of the leftovers, they're probably going to be like what we saw in the other bin, maybe a mango seed or something. Right here, 
Oh yeah, it's starting to come back to me. This is the um, some of the stuff that I'm directly trying to avoid by mixing in the <laughs> uh, leaves that they don't have clumps of paper like you see here. So when I bump into these, I try to see if I can break them apart a little bit and hopefully when we put them back in, we can help them not get matted up to themselves again so badly. All right, gotta keep an eye out for worms trying to escape my um, kind of rough housing <laughs> approach to feeding them. Let's just really, really quickly see how the other stuff in here looks. There's the old mango seed. I guess here, I don't know, I don't know if we've got the avocados or not. Let's see if we can just do a quick kind of comb through the last feeding area and well, the last feeding area is pretty much the feeding area that I always use down the middle. Another mango seed. So, um, lots of castings inside. Almost like the seed itself has been gobbled up and I could see some worms hanging out down in there. <laughs> So, you can see they work their way through that stuff, but that takes time. It takes a fair bit of time. Alrighty. So, we've got ourselves a nice open area here to drop today's feeding into. Come on, buddy. Get back in there. Be careful not to lose any worms on the dry tablecloth paper covering here. So, we'll grab a little bit more, hopefully, a material that will fast compost. Some newspaper shreds. Oops. And hopefully by mixing in some of the leafy material from the sides here, and maybe some of the old matted together <laughs> clumps of paper, we can help it all um, avoid clumping together. Alright. Now the food remaining is perhaps a little more than we gave the other container. It'll all slide out of the bag and it starts to thaw. It gets a little sticky and wet, but we did manage to get all of them to slide right out. You can see very similar tomato for good measure, stump end <laughs> of some lettuce as well as some lettuce leaves. Here's the cantaloupe that we tried to share. Looks like these guys even got a little bonus with some um, bits and pieces of cucumber peel. So definitely not a larger feeding. Unless you count this banana peel, <laughs> I almost forgot about. So, this bin might have a slightly greater population. I guess we tried to compensate for that with perhaps a little bit more food. Since the other bin didn't get a banana peel. <laughs> okay, buddy. Keep telling these guys, stay in the bin. And here's another one. Let's see if we can get these guys to stay in the bin. Alright, we better finish up here otherwise we're gonna have some really annoyed worms here trying really hard to escape and I wouldn't want any of them to be successful at doing that <laughs> otherwise they could be in pretty bad shape out here on the dry table or even worse down on the dry floor they would not last long that's for sure but we're pretty much done here we've got the food we got the bedding we got the grit and I think here too we're gonna avoid adding fresh leaves anymore and we're going to start steering these pretty old European nightcrawler bins towards um, eventually being ready to be harvested for all these beautiful castings that are piling up here. So I got this um got this feeling we're gonna I don't know I don't want to jinx myself so let's just see what we see. <laughs> I was trying to I was going to predict what we see when we explore the edges of the bins here before we close up. So let's see what we see. It does feel to me like the material is perhaps a little even more rich in castings than the other one was. And given the added age of an extra week, being older a little bit, and possibly being populated with slightly more worms than the other one, not too surprising. And I guess mixing in a little bit of leafy material into this stuff as we fill the hole back in is not a bad idea either. Give all this stuff a chance to break down. And here's a corn cob bit that's not really breaking down as quickly as the others. Maybe by busting it up will help it along a bit. Very nice. 
Let's see if we can save some of these leaves to cover up on top with at the end. <laughs> Here we're not going to have many, I think. So Here too, we'll try to preserve some of this clean leafy matter to cover up with at the end. Let's check out how this stuff on this edge looks too. Here, wow. This stuff is really mobbed with worms for whatever reason. Sometimes I wonder if as I add a new portion of food and I push things out towards the sides, assuming that there's very few leftovers, maybe there's lots of leftovers. And maybe those leftovers from weeks and weeks ago are, you know, perhaps even more appealing to the worms than the stuff added very fresh and recently. Maybe that's the reason they like these outskirts of the bin. So you look around and there's just worms all throughout this stuff. Very, very nice. Lots of nice castings piling up too. Oops, where'd that go? I'll try to get that back in here. So, all right, I think we are done here. Very nice. Love the way these bins are progressing, especially this one. This one's really doing nicely. 94 days of age. And I don't know, this feeding doesn't seem like it's going to last long. What do you think? <laughs> Chunks of lettuce, some bits of uh, cantaloupe rind. I mean, that's the sort of stuff you can expect to see gone within days, just a couple days. So, I don't know. We'll see when we get a chance to get back in here to feed. Perhaps another week or so. This time it was a week since they last got fed. So, um, they're doing a good job. Doing away with the foods that they keep, keep getting given. They keep getting given? That they keep getting. Stay in there, buddy. And pretty soon we're going to maybe turn their attention to breaking down all this nice remaining um, bedding material too after we stop giving them fresh foods and let them focus on breaking down all the remaining little scraps of leaves and paper and whatnot that remain so that's it for today everyone hopefully you uh, enjoyed this little check-in with my European night crawlers if you did then please remember leave me a thumbs up that's always really appreciated and if you haven't done so already please also consider subscribing to the channel too that's really appreciated as well all right everyone have a great day bye now